It is my honor to invite Ambassador Jean Daniel Buch, the Ambassador of Switzerland and Israel. This is also an opportunity to thank the Swiss Embassy for their wonderful preparation. It has been a real pleasure to work with a wonderful team, and especially I want to thank Yael Weiler. Dear Professor Robin, dear Rabbi Hanun, Deputy Mayor of Haifa, dear Mr. and Mrs. Lifnat, dear Madame Hirschi, uh, you, you and, and what your father has been doing has been an inspiration for me long before I had to deal with the, with the Middle East, long before I was in Israel. I want to thank you really for cultivating the memoir of Carlos, who has been saving without any order or instructions, and maybe even against the instructions of his government, they saved 62,000 Jews in Hungary during the Second World War. And the inspiration for me has been that, listen to your heart, Listen to a small, skill voice which is telling you what is right and don't ask too much for your hierarchy, what they want for you. I had the chance, which does not happen often in the career of a diplomat, to be able to implement these inspirations without too much asking around. When I I found myself in Serbia in uh, 1999 and then 2000 and when Serbia was ruled by a person who was indicted of genocide. The genocide of Srebrenica, which, whereby in one week in 1995, 8,000 Muslim boys and men were executed, savaged. And the fact that I was there and I could support first bringing this man to jail and in front of the court. And then working for the court later on between 2003 and 2007, I could uh, try to bring a little bit of justice to the victims of these atrocities. Eventually, unfortunately, he committed suicide. He died of a, of a heart condition, but was partly also his own uh, deliberate choice. Thanks God, others who were his accomplices were sentenced to the harsher sentence and the latest one last week was Radovan Karadzic, who got the life sentence. So during all these years, not only could I be inspired by the action of people like Carlos, who sought not just justice, but also truth. But I was also inspired by what I uh, remembered and what I knew of the Holocaust. Uh, my first memory of the Holocaust is really from the Swiss television when I was 10 or 12 years old and one evening in a flagship program of news, which is still existing, they show the pictures taken by the Soviet armies when they liberated Auschwitz. And this says, this says, um, not sure I slept that night and the nights after because this was such, such shocking images. But for a boy in his uh, early teenage years, I think this is the best education you can get. That teaches you tolerance. And that teaches you the never again that you mentioned, Mr. Professor. Then, of course, I visited Auschwitz several times, including one uh, with the prosecutor of the Yugoslavia War Crimes Tribunal. It was a very, very moving visit. We had the feeling we were sort of continuing the work of justice which had been initiated by the prosecutor of the Nuremberg trial. And we found that this work of justice is also a work of truth because it helps to shape the facts. And it prevents people from inventing their own narratives or changing the reality according to their political agenda. 
and thereby endangering our, our democracy. I remember long, a few years ago I had a conversation with a former lawyer of this uh, president who probably died in prison, Milosevic. And he started to argue about, yes, but you know, maybe it was not 8,000 victims, maybe it was only 5,000, and he made this kind of small calculations. And you see, those people, they are always trying to use and abuse history for their own political reasons. Now, as you said, <coughs> Mr. President, uh, not just Europe, we've seen New Zealand also, is facing a surge in hate speech. Some of it, many of it, a lot of it, too much of it directed against, directed also against Jews. And that definitely threatens our democracies. Incitement threatens our democracies. From my experience, what I can say is that what can save democracy is uh, well, courageous leaders who do not necessarily listen to their electors but to their conscience as Carlos listened to his conscience. And also media, including um, visual media, televisions, movies, uh, who show the reality, who just show the pictures, who show the images because the images in our civilization of today are even more powerful, and films are even more powerful than the words. I believe that there should be no schoolboy or no schoolgirl in the world who should be allowed to buy a high school without having seen those pictures from Auschwitz, seen those movies shot by the Soviet armies, or visited one of the camps in Auschwitz is obviously the most dramatic one. Uh, before finishing, I would like to have a thought for the woman who is unfortunately not with us tonight and who has been the or initiator, the creator of this project, I can say that. I'm thinking of Anita Winter, who unfortunately lost her father last week and who could not be with her. So uh, I think we can express to her all our sympathy and also how grateful we are for what she has been doing. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, I would uh, like to invite uh, uh, Professor Ron Hobby actually to give a small token for our appreciation and uh, our wonderful uh, partnership with the Embassy uh, and Ambassador. So please. So inside here, maybe we should say this in front of the microphone, is a, a, a replica of a pomegranate, uh, which we have here in the museum. Um, may I open it to show it? I think we should. Do you mind? <laughs> it looks a little strange to give you a... Uh, <laughs> there it is, for everyone to see. And, um, you know, pomegranate in Jewish tradition is, um, has many meanings. Some of it is to be fruitful. It also is a symbol of our new year and a symbol of hope. And so we give you the symbol of hope, and thank you once again for all that you've done. For us. Thank you very much. Thank you.